And welcome to CB8 Speaks. I'm Scott Falk, member of Community Board 8 and co-chair of both the Transportation Committee and the 197A Queensborough Bridge Area Redevelopment Committee, which is a mouthful. <laughs> I'm joined today to talk about the waterfront and East River Esplanade with two of our uh, Community Board Committee co-chairs, Peggy Price, who co-chairs the Parks Committee, and Trisha Shimamura, who chairs the Waterfront Committee, as well as Audrey Tannen from State Assembly Member Rebecca Seawright's office. Peggy, I wonder if you could tell us about why the East River Esplanade and our waterfront has been such a major priority for the Community Board over the last many years. It's been noticed for a long time that the Esplanade, which is a park that runs between the river and the FDR Drive, has been, um, has been aging and without adequate repairs. About seven years ago, our Parks Committee, thanks in large part to Barbara Rutter, had decided to make it a, a top priority for the the Parks Committee, that we should encourage the city to repair the Esplanade. So we held a forum and elected two elected officials. Uh, at the time, it was Jessica Lappin and Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney <clears throat> created an East River Task Force. And out of our forum was also created a, a grassroots group called the Friends of the East River Esplanade. Between all of our groups, and also Civitas, I should note, we've been pushing very hard to get the Esplanade repaired. People are noticing that increasingly it's been crumbling to the point where it's no longer actually safe. And uh, we've seen that last May, there was a, a whole section of the seawall between 88th and 90th Street that crumbled in bad weather and fell into the river. Subsequently, um, I think it's gotten more attention from city officials. But in the meantime, though these various years since we held our forum, we've seen private organizations get active, including Rockefeller University in the mid 60s, and more recently the Hospital for Special Surgery donate money in order to help create an improvement to the Esplanade in front of their facilities. So that helped get the ball rolling in terms of city participating in fixing the Esplanade. There had been a lot of talk for a long time and not too much action. So finally, I, I believe it was the, um, the private organizations that helped propel this into getting f fixed and improved. So there's a number of activities going on right now at Rockefeller University area between 64th Street and um, 68th Street. There's a whole project to improve and beautify the Esplanade and to repair the underpinnings that have so badly eroded. And um, now the hospital for special surgery is improving a section between uh, 70th and 72nd Street. We hear that improvements are going to take place between 77, 72nd and 78th Street. And this spring, that whole eroded section that crumbled between 88th and 90th Street um, be, uh, uh, improvements began on that front that are scheduled to take about 10 months. So, so just to conclude, there's been, in our community, there's been a number of piecemeal actions to improve the Esplanade, and we're hoping that work on the whole Esplanade can accelerate so that we won't face a number, another situation where a whole section crumbles mm -hmm. and creates a dangerous situation for the users. Absolutely, and I wanna uh, pivot for a moment from uh, talking about the private institutions and to talk not just about the city, but other um, you know, government funding because uh, many of us first met Trisha, I think, when she was working with Congresswoman Maloney and um, 
you know, very active in that um, task force for the East River Esplanade. So, Tricia, can you uh, tell us a little bit about your history? Sure. Actually, I was just thinking about this while you were speaking, Peggy. Um, when I was working for Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, uh, one day uh, one of uh, my fellow staffers said, there are two women here from Community Board 8 who need to speak to you. And I said, okay. And um, I walked out into our little lobby and I met uh, Peggy Price and at the time Barbara Rudder, who was then uh, the co-chair of the Parks Committee. And they sat me down and they said that there are two things that are most important to this community. One is the East River Esplanade and two is the need for more open public space in general. I was blown away by their commitment and their passion and their enthusiasm for this. I agreed with them that open space in our community, especially in our community board, is so vital and yet very sparse. And so um, from that point, I uh, worked with them and I, through uh, the Congressman Maloney, uh, the task force that now she chairs with uh, Council Member Ben Kalos um, to focus on where the Esplanade repairs are, where the funding was coming in from, trying to make sure that these repairs are were happening in as timely a fashion as possible. Um, I was so still in inspired by the leadership that Peggy showed and that Barbara showed that I soon after that asked to become a public member of CB8 Parks where I further got to watch them advocate and I got to work with them on various projects related to open space. And then later on uh, decided that from that I wanted to become a full board member. Uh, which happened in 2015. Open space is just so important to our community and um, not only open space, but as Peggy was saying, the Esplanade and the waterfront is incredibly dynamic. Um, people use it for recreation, but it also is being used for a number of other, for trans as a mode of transportation. Um, it is uh, seen as part of a larger network of uh, open space that will, should go around the entire island of Manhattan, and um, it needs a lot of attention and a lot of advocacy. So actually in January of this year, our chair decided that due to the rollout of ferry service and due to concerns um, about still uh, advocacy for the Esplanade and as well as concerns about environmental issues um, and sustainability, resiliency efforts, that um, this all called for the creation of a, of a committee that was entirely dedicated towards looking at our waterfront. And I've uh, been the proud chair of that committee since, uh, 2000, since the start of 2017. Great, and then I wanna um, also bring up our former community board colleague, Assembly Member Seawright. Yes. So, Audrey, I know that you're um, relatively new to yes, um, the Assembly yes. Member's office. Um, yes. So, uh, Audrey Tanner, can you tell us um, what you do for the Assembly? Sure. Board? I'm her director of constituent services, and um, Rebecca is sorry she couldn't be here today. She's actually up in Albany, do, uh, in some meetings up there. But she wanted everyone to understand that her appreciation for the Esplanade came in two ways. First of all, before she was ever elected, as a member of the community, she enjoyed walking the Esplanade with her children and still enjoys walking um, and is really happy to see so many bikers and dog walkers and people just enjoying the open space and the waterfront. The other issue, which is vitally important to her, is the whole environmental issue and that esplanade and that seawall being the first fortress, if you will, if there was ever any kind of natural event, whether it be flooding or, or storms or anything like that. It's not just for the recreational activities that she's so concerned about the esplanade, but also as a defense for that community if there ever is any issue in terms of an environmental um, water uh, issue coming up. So she's that's what led her to really still be a strong advocate for the need to protect and enrich and, and, and fix that explanade. And I think uh, the assembly member actually has a lot of waterfront in her district. Her district is basically 59th to, to 96th, including Roosevelt Island. So you're absolutely right. It's a critical, it's, it's part of the neighborhood. It's a big part of, the, of her, her district. And so speaking of the waterfront and her district, uh, 
I understand ferry service has recently been introduced on Roosevelt Island um, and then should be coming yeah. um, in the in the next year to the Upper East Side at 90th Street. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us about the uh, the service that, that they have now, the ferry service yes. on Roosevelt Island? Yes. Number one, uh, the, rep the reports from the community are all positive about the ferry service on the island. It's taken off very well. Um, I think I have stats here that on the, fir the first 17 days of the Astoria uh, ferry service, which includes Roosevelt Island and Long Island City, there were 43,000 riders. Now, the reason that's significant is that beginning July 29th, there were one million riders in the entire east side uh, service. So. Comparably speaking, the, the Astoria Ferry Service apparently has many more riders already than the rest of the lines on the East River, which includes the Williamsburg, Brooklyn area and Greenpoint, and the back and forth between Brooklyn and Wall Street and East 34th Street. So it is very popular. It's been very successful. Uh, the community is really happy with it. The only concern, and Rebecca is working on this, it's not part of the fare for the metro, for the ferry is not part of the metro card system. Uh, so that it means that if you have an individual single fare card, you can't transfer. If you have a monthly card, you can't use it. If you have a school pass, you can't use it um, on the ferry. It's a 275 fare, but it's not part of the metro system. So she is working on trying to advocate for that uh, and uh, is working with city council members because, again, it's the New York City ferry system. It's not simply uh, the line that affects her district. Yeah. So that's a major concern. Of course, one thing that gives the um, assembly member a, a real role there is that the uh, MTA is a state authority. Um, with, you know, so it's, it's good that we have people in Albany trying to advocate for that yes. you know, interoperability. I remember when I moved to the neighborhood about 20 years ago, the um, Roosevelt Island tram was not Yes. It was using subway tokens, but it wasn't right. on the Metro card, right. even though the subway was on the Metro card. So you couldn't get a transfer from the tram to anything else. And now That's uh, right. it's fully integrated. So I hope that as we, the... We do. Though we do need to know that this ferry is run by the Hornblower Ferry Service, right. which is a private entity. And that you're absolutely right about the tram, which was run by REAC, which was still the state authority, made it a little less complicated than working on this issue. But she's determined uh, to work with her colleagues in the state assembly and the city council um, to, to advocate on this issue about the Metro card. Yeah. The other issue that she's concerned about as she looks forward to the 90th Street Ferry opening is the access to the ferry station itself. Um, I think this is something that she's spoken to the committees about on the community board, and that's that the ferry, NYC Ferry, will be responsible for the ferry platform, the ferry station, to make sure that it's accommodating to all citizens, including those who are disabled, perhaps needing wheelchair access, stroller access. The, however, the streets leading up to the, the ferry port uh, don't have that regulation from New York City Ferry. Therefore, we got to make sure that the curb cuts make it reasonable for people who are maybe in wheelchairs or having strollers uh, can get to the station easily. The community board has definitely um, had a lot of discussions over the last many years about access. Um, you know, we've been working with the city on accessibility to John Finley Walk, which is a portion of the Esplanade in the 80s, um, uh, you know, leading from where the 81st Street pedestrian bridge is about to open the brand new version yes. of the bridge. Actually, and that's the area where we had the, the crumbling mm. recently. Tricia, on the Waterfront Committee and in partnership with the other committees, uh, what projects have you been focusing on um, in this first year? Sure. Um, well, I, just to comment on what you said first, um, I think that these conversations about access and about how we use uh, the waterfront are just really indicative of the fact that so many people um, use this wa this waterfront. They use it for commuting. They use it for exercise. Um, we're going to be seeing it as an access point for our ferries soon, and I, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's just so much that's that goes on, and it's just such an, an um, kind of dynamic 
resource. Um, and I think that these conversations and these struggles that we're trying to face with trying to preserve it and trying to also make it accessible just really point to the fact that this is a much beloved and um, incredibly important piece of our community and that we need to protect, including Roosevelt Island, which is a whole other um, yeah. conversation as well. <laughs> um, so our committee, I like to think of the Waterfront Committee as, as being um, as pure, more collaborative than most other committees and that our issues that we'll, that we discuss, chances are probably going to be connected to another committee. And I love that because I um, am relatively new to the board, and but I very much look look up to and um, respect the work that's being done by parks and by transportation and 197A and so many other committees that it's been really a pleasure uh, to try to work with other committees and to try to see how we might be able to amplify the work that they're doing and to support them and to advocate on behalf of the issues that are important to all of us, um, everybody on the board. So uh, to start, we um, when we when our committee first started, we kind of opened it up to the community to talk about, to bring to us some of the issues that were important to them. And among those issues were, of course, the Esplanade, of course, ferry service. But another big issue was what um, Audrey actually had mentioned before, which is sustainability and resiliency. Very important. So we invited um, to start kind of the conversation on something that was important to all of us in terms of safety, in terms of future planning. We invited the, the mayor's office of recovery and resiliency to come speak to us about um, flood maps and what they're doing and, and where uh, Community Board 8 is most at risk of flooding, what we're being done to prepare. Um, there's a lot of the East River in general, not even talking about the land, but the water itself um, is very interesting because there have been efforts in the past to utilize its strength for in terms of energy, energy and um, also talking about ways to slow the river down a little bit in order to make us a little safer along our along our seawall. So um, it was an incredibly interesting conversation to have. We're going to continue to work on ways to make sure that our uh, waterfront is as resilient as possible. Resiliency meaning, of course, not that another storm is not going to come, but that we are able to recover quickly and um, safely um, as, as, um, as we are when, whenever the next storm comes. So we've been working on resiliency. Um, another issue that we've been focusing on is, of course, ferry service. So um, in addition to the Astoria uh, route, next year we'll be having the Soundview route coming, on, uh, coming in in 2018 which will start at Soundview in the Bronx, then go down to 90th Street at the 90th Street Pier, um, then go down to 34th Street and finish up at Wall Street Pier 11. So that will bring a whole new set of um, users to the Esplanade and to the waterfront that we need to prepare for and, and think about um, how we're gonna welcome them to the east side. Um, so uh, we've, we were happy to, inv to have EDC, which is the New York City Economic Development Corporation, come and make a presentation to us um, about where they are with planning. And we're going to be meeting again with them this winter to kind of follow up and make sure that our community is informed on what their plans are for ferry service, what are some of the hurdles that they still need to address. We echo the uh, Rebecca Seawright's concerns and the rest of the elected officials who are concerned about having a unified pay system. There are other um, questions about connecting between um, ferry service and buses and subways and bikes and everything else like that. So there's a lot to a lot of coordination that needs to take place, and our committee has been happy to work on that coordination and um, and help get our community prepared for ferry service. And then finally, of course, there's the Esplanade. And um, we are thrilled to partner with the Parks Committee and with D with the Transportation Committee as those as issues arise um, on, on Esplanade-related issues. One particular um, kind of small piece that we've been able to add so far is that uh, we've noticed that our Esplanade has um, very little signage calling it an Esplanade um, and no maps of where the Esplanade starts or ends or where accessible entrances or exits are or where major where the ferry service will be or any of these other um, kind of major points of interest. So we've been working on trying to uh, trying to create a plan for um, advocating for si map and sign signage along the waterfront. Um, also on the streets, the big avenues of first, second, and third, trying to get some direction and get more attention towards directing people to, to the waterfront, making sure that it's there, maybe, that everybody knows that it's there, that they can use it. You know, we talk all, all the time about why isn't the east side like the west side mm -hmm. and um, why can't we have something else nice. But I think that in part it's just 
these little things like signs and these little things like making sure it's not crumbling into the water um, that um, helps I think community members see that that there are people who care about this and yeah that we want it to be we want it to be as nice we're working yeah. on it. Well, it's funny because you you uh, stopped and at, as if you were correcting yourself when you first said to make sure it's there and to make sure people know it's there but in fact as you say with making sure there's funding to fix the infrastructure it is also to make sure that it is actually still there um, you know and that we'll be able to use it and on that um, note um, I know that uh, the uh, assembly member uh, recently announced some grant funding for the East River Esplanade. Yes. Um, Audrey, can you tell us about that funding? Yes, it was for the Friends of the East River Esplanade, and it was for the improvements at the Con Ed site on East 74th Street. So she's in the preliminary stages of planning uh, with the committee how that will be used and uh, to make sure that it gets to the people and to what, what needs to happen. Yeah, and that uh, group, the Friends of the East River Esplanade, that was the conservancy born out of your Parks Committee forum, wasn't that? Yes, it's great having a um, local group that's um, made up of constituents of the community as well as the community board creating a grassroots, a unified grassroots push for fixing this important piece of our park system. And, you know, Trisha referenced a point which is, why don't we have what they have on the west side? And, you know, it's interesting. I think what people don't realize, the Esplanade is a relatively narrow walkway, except that when you get a little bit further north of about 100th Street, it does widen up a bit, giving people a little more room. But on the whole, it's a fairly narrow strip. But if you add in the parks that are attached to it, such as the Carl Schurz Park, and also the park that you've been working on, the Andrew Haswell Green Park. You, you create a broader expanse, which makes it so much nicer, and you can easily exit from the Esplanade to those parks to fully utilize the whole area. And so I think people, what people should realize is that it, it's a sort of unified area where you don't just walk or ride your bike down this strip. You can get off the Esplanade and participate in any number of further activities in the parkland that's there. So it, I feel badly when people don't think that we have something that we're lacking what the West Side <laughs> has, when in fact, we, we have been working hard to make it even better, as especially the, uh, your group with the uh, the An Andrew Haswell Green Park is a new addition to to our park space in that area. Yeah, I'm very excited to be getting closer and closer to the opening of the next phases. You know, the uh, the part that's uh, known as Phase Two A, the um, roof of the old heliport, uh, you know, where the uh, Alice Acock sculpture is and um, what used to be known as Pavilion Park, um, you know, is reopening this fall. And then, um, you know, the city is preparing for the, um, for the bids for the next phase, phase 2B, which will be the, uh, the bigger park itself um, before moving on and hopefully redeveloping the um, sanitation building um, underneath the pavilion. Mm -hmm. uh, so th th I think it's all very exciting. Peggy? Uh, how would you recommend that people could try to um, get more involved in seeing the Esplanade preserved and improved and properly repaired? The main things I would say are please join, come to the meetings of the Waterfront Committee, come to the meetings of the Parks Committee. And also, you know, there's a um, an excellent group that I mentioned before called the Friends of the East River Esplanade. And as I mentioned before, Civitas are groups that are working very hard to try to push for the um, acceleration of repairs to the Esplanade and at the same time create activities that take place there to draw more people there. In the summertime, uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, the Friends of the East River Esplanade put on events at the pier at 90th Street that are proving to be quite popular mm -hmm. and familiarize people much more with what we have out at the Esplanade. The only drawback at the moment is that sections of it are blocked off for repairs. So it, it's becoming an obstacle course to get around all the repair areas. And so that's one of the reasons why we've been working so hard to try to propel the, act, the work of improving it so that we can have a, a, a complete esplanade that you can actually use without great inconvenience mm -hmm. um, it, as soon as possible. But in the meantime, I think that, you know, people... People really are concerned about the Esplanade. Please come to the waterfront meetings, yeah. to the parks committee meetings. We need your help. And the more help we get, the louder our voices can be. And we get more attention from the city. I actually, I do want to mention, since you brought up the city, and very briefly earlier, there was a mention of um, former council member Jessica Lappin, who really was a champion on the Esplanade and working on uh, starting that task force, and her successor, council member Kalos, who has been um, quite instrumental in trying to get funding for a lot of the repairs. Um, so, you know, in addition to those private institutions and the help from um, state yes. funding as the assembly member brought us. Uh, I actually, I want to thank you for thank coming you. today and thank filling you. in. Um, we really appreciate your coming here to represent um, the assembly well, member's thank office. You, she... And uh, Tricia, is there anything that you'd uh, like to mention that people can do in addition to just coming to meetings and, and, and helping us to push this forward? I completely agree with everything that Peggy has said uh, thus far. I think that just if I could add anything, it would just be that um, to touch on what you said about our elected officials, uh, our Esplanade, our waterfront needs funding. We applaud the funding that we've been given so far. It's been wonderful, but I think that, and I, we definitely want people to get involved and come to our meetings, come to parks meetings, come to waterfront meetings, come to full board meetings uh, to make your voice heard. Um, but we need uh, to remind our elected officials through participatory budgeting. We need to remind the mayor every time he's around. We need to remind all everyone um, who has a seat at the table that funding is needed for our Esplanade now. Great. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you That's for tuning it. in. Uh, this has been CB8 Speaks. And uh, please do visit our website, CB8M, like Manhattan.com, and sign up for our mailing list to stay informed about our meetings and events. <laughs>